And I just realized that we have coverbs. So at last he was struck by heat. Refreshing. The traveler no sooner felt his genial rays than he took off one garment after another. Oh, this is going to be a brutal one to translate. Let's keep it going. Let's keep the party going. All right. What's the core of this sentence? Hello, YouTube. Welcome back. We are going back into our as yet unnamed language family. Uh, I think we're just calling it the isolating or analytic language family for now. Um, and we're going to continue our translation of the fable, the North Wind and the Sun. So if that sounds like your kind of thing, stay tuned. We're about to get started. And away we go. So let's see. Let me just increase the size on this here. Maybe not that big. Um, and then we have, I'll read out what we have of the fable so far. Maybe move this around. There we go. Not that far. There we go. Super. All right. So the north wind and the sun, or in this, uh, in this proto language, we can call it Tutanpana Mare. Oops. There we go. And the story goes like this. The north wind and the sun had an argument. Tutanpana Mare Lakiris. They disputed which was the most powerful. They agreed that the one who could first strip a traveler of his clothes would be considered the victor. The north wind first tried his power and blew with all his might. But the keener his blasts, the closer the traveler wrapped his cloak around him. At last, resigning all hope of victory, the wind called upon the sun to see what he could do. That's where we are so far. So we've got uh, a little bit more to do. And... Onwards. Um... Okay, so uh, what are we going to do? Let's, let's do a little gloss of this sentence here. The sun suddenly shone out with all his warmth. Okay. Something like what we do here. Sun um, shine. I believe we are... Oh, yeah, we do have a past. We do have past. I, I made a promise in Discord um, that one of these languages in this family is going to have zero tense marking and zero aspect marking, but it's not the proto language. Um, so the sun passed shine. Uh, shone out with all his warmth. Seems a bit English. Let's do something like use all um, hot or heat um, past shine. Okay, so what do we have for this? We have we have a word for the sun, which is re, a bit of a shout out to uh, um, Egyptian there. Uh, we have a word for use, I believe. It is d -d -d nom. And re, nom, all. I think we have all. We have nom, nok, right. I think we're going to need a word for heat. So let's just write heat here. And then la, la is our past tense morpheme. And then we need something for shine. Okay, excellent. Cool. Hey, when things are magically fixed, that's always a, that's always a joy. Um, all right, let's, let's continue. So we need uh, forms for hot, hot or heat and, and shine. Mm, okay, so let's see what we have here. Do we have anything like that already? I don't think so. And shine, maybe bright. No. Okay, so we need new roots. And let's go down here. Ah, we have, yeah, we have some, uh, some ideas here. I think we had something like Ljapklat for give up, surrender, yep, glut. 
put that in there. Um, not sure. Oh yeah, we already have. It's already up here, guys. Come on, what, what's going on? Okay, so let's say. Let's get a, Let's get ourselves some new uh, word forms. We have this nice big. Here, I'll make it uh, appropriately sized. We have a nice big paragraph of uh, forms, uh, phonological forms for this language, which we can just sort of dip into and take things from as we wish. So we need something for heat and something for shine. Um, I think we haven't used thwar yet, if I'm not mistaken. So maybe this could be heat and shine. Let's see, do we have anything that looks shiny? I, th I feel like this should have an E or something in it. I don't know. Um, do something like nrit. Oops. Yeah, nrit is nice. So then this sentence would be re nom noctuar. Sorry, let me intone that properly. Re nom noc. Re nom noctuar la nrit. Not bad. Okay. Oh boy, this this next sentence is going to be it's going to be something. Oh, but but first before I go on, documentation please. Hot heat toar and shine nri. Okay. Don't know what we're going to do with these yet. We need forms for them, but we haven't been forced to do it, so we'll leave that as is so far. Oh, Rising Rose, thank you. You reminded me to hydrate and stretch. I gotta take my own advice here. Mm. Refreshing. The Traveler no sooner felt his genial rays than he took off one garment after another. Oh, this is gonna be a brutal one to translate. All right, what's the core of this sentence? The traveler um, took off garments one by one. So maybe we can rephrase it. I'm going to do a, an extra line of the translation for, for this one because it's, it's, it's just so idiomatic English that I, I'd like it to be a bit less so. So the traveler, instead of saying no sooner, as soon as the traveler felt the sun's rays, he took off garments one by one. I think this is going to be an easier starting point for us to translate. Um, oh, Raven asks, uh, in this in the sentence re nom noctuar la nrit, um, the main verb is nrit, shine. We have here uh, a coverb situation where we're having verbs being used uh, sort of like a, it's a serial verb construction almost that where the the previous verbs are be mating are, are being used uh, more adverbially um, so you could think of it you could translate it as the Sun used all heat and Sean or the Sun using all heat Sean something like that um, all right Let's continue then. So we need something for as soon as soon as the traveler. We have uh, we're using a headless relative clause aroban. The one who travels I can probably put this up here. So soon as relative travel I really wish it would stop I really wish it would stop making these links um, anyway boom goodbye goodbye links the blue remains I don't know why okay so as soon as the traveler uh, then something like feel um, victory ray sun uh, we have this uh, order where the thing possessed, the possessum, is first, and then the possessor is second. Um, so we have that here in hope of victory. 
the wind in the end gave up all hope victory, meaning hope of victory. Um, okay, so we have that. As soon as the traveler felt the sun's rays, um, something like take off clothes one by one. And maybe, maybe this adverb should be here. Okay, so we need something for feel, ray, sun. Oh no, we, we have ray. Uh, then we need something for one by one. Take off, I don't think we have anything like that. And clothes we do have, which is I believe less. Let's see if we have it up here. Yeah, we do. Oh, 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 we do have take off. We have remove, twar. Okay, so one by one, twar, less. And I just realized that we have twar, uh, twar being used for heat and for remove. And I, I don't mind. I don't mind. Um, Okay, let's see. I missed some things in the uh, in the chat. Oh, I missed a lot of things in the chat. Welcome, everyone. Um, converb or coverb? Uh, okay, now n now you're making me wonder. Um, the way that it's I think usually talked about in sort of um, in Chinese linguistics is coverb. Um, a converb would be something more like you'd have in Korean, where you'd have um, some sort of like a, an ending with participial force. Um, we might have to look this up because that's a good question. Um, okay, so yes, Gregory, we do have a, a, a homophonous pair of roots, but I, I find I find that I find that okay. Weirdly, like I think um, maybe this could be something that one of the uh, descendant languages takes issue with and, and innovates a new root to remove this homophony. But I think. Uh, I think we can have homophony and, and still be uh, relatively naturalistic. Um, heaven knows natural languages do not hate homophony in general. Um, yeah, let's let's go let's go for some official definitions because I wanna I wanna get the uh, the real story about this converb versus coverb thing. So, converb. Because we're pros, we use Wikipedia for our definitions, right? Um, okay, so converbs... Ah, okay, uh, I think I was correct. Um, converbs are non-finite verb forms that express adverbial sword, uh, subordination. Things like when, because, after, a while. So you'll see this... Uh, actually, we use converbs extensively in the call languages. Um, coverbs are things that are, function more like a serial verb construction. Um, so let's, uh, let's go over here to coverbs and see if we get, get any examples. Okay, we have one in Mandarin. Uh, I help you find him, uh, where help you is, is a, uh, a kind of like a benefactive, uh, meaning. And, um, okay, so that, I think, digress digression ended because there's some more interesting stuff coming up. Yeah, Zachary, I think, uh, I think you're correct. Um, and then Raven, if use all heat is the main verb, shouldn't the past marker precede it? No, use all heat is not the main verb. Um, shine is the main verb. This is this use all heat is is, is less main. <laughs> um, so for that reason, I'm leaning away from Putting the um, putting the marker on on that clause, uh, but I think uh, Raven is correct that it should be heat all. So let's because wait, I have to just double check. What did we have? Ah, uh, we didn't actually save what we have for adjectives, do we? Do we? Hmm. 
I don't think we have any adjective noun situations going on here. I guess arguably our um, our compounds are right-headed. Hmm. We might need to go to walls. Hmm. Do we want to do that now? Yeah, let's do it now. Uh, adverbs. Okay, that's just sorry. Adjectives. Order of adjective and noun, and then let's add this with verb object. There we go. Let's see what we have. I have a weird sensation that we've done this already. I'm not sure. I don't remember it though, so could be helpful. Okay, so we have VO noun adjective, VO adjective noun. So if we're being typical, we should do noun adjective. I'm not sure if this is going to affect the headedness of the compounds like north wind. Um, let's put that aside for now. Uh, and let's put um, let's put heat all. So use heat all, and then we have also use all power should be use power all. So nom nisun nok. Okay, I like it. Teamwork. Lucy, I don't know if you want to. You could use that for the intro or something. Um, okay. Okay, so where were we? I believe we were. Yeah, Raven, this is the this is what I'm wondering. Because is is north effectively an adjective? I'm trying to think to an example of a language that is that has VO and noun adjective, but then they have noun noun compounds. Are they right headed or left headed? So do we have things like north wind or wind north in languages where there are compounds? Hmm. Um, in Feridamus, if I'm getting the stress right on that, um, it is a genitive, uh, as Ship Combo points out. So that's going to go to the right um, because we have, in our little grammar sketch, we have, I think, did we say? No, but I remember that we have uh, possessum possessor. So the possessum is the thing that's possessed. So in here, um, hope of victory. Hope is the possessor. Victory is the uh, is the possessor. And using that argument, we could probably that's another uh, that's another argument in favor of, of wind north, isn't it? Okay, I think I think I'm ready to to surrender on uh, wind north. Uh, and let's just let's just do it. So instead of tutan pana, we have pana tutan. Because there's, you know, whether you interpret it as an adjective, whether you interpret it as a genitive, it's going to be on the right. So, I think we're without, uh, we're without any uh, ability to, to argue against that. Okay. So then, wind north wind to wind north. Panatutan. And anything else? I don't think so. Okay. All right. So then let's continue. We need something like as soon as. Yeah, it's it's basically like um it's basically like I had an initial party. <laughs> so Let's keep it going. Let's keep the party going. Um, as soon as the traveler felt the rays of the sun. Okay, so we need a word for ray. And here, let's let's indulge in some some fun semantic um, 
I don't know, some fun semantics. So I think instead of having a word for ray, specifically of light, we could say something like ray, dart, arrow, something like that. Uh, so we have a very, a fairly broad, um, a fairly broad concept of any kind of missile. Um, so we need a word for that. We need a word for feel. Uh, we need, so, and then we need this sort of as soon as. And I'm not sure what we're going to do with that. Yeah, I'm not sure what we're going to do with that. And then we need a one by one adverbial. Okay, so yeah, thinking of the sun's heat as 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 kind of things that are thrown at people. Um, this is a kind of I don't know, a kind of folk concept of uh, things like vision as well, like the idea of being able to stare daggers at people or or Superman having these beams that shoot out of his eyes um, to see something when in, in reality vision kind of works the opposite way when things come to our eyes. Um, but I like this idea of enshrining that kind of folk concept in the uh, in the lexicon. So we have this this um, this idea of a dart or a weapon of some kind that you throw, and the sun's rays are, are the same kind of thing, just transposed to a different metaphorical domain. Um, so we need a word for that. We need a word for feel. And I'm not sure what to do with these uh, this as soon as I think we had. At the time, yeah, we could use something like at at the at the time that the um, that gives us sort of more of a when uh, a when idea. Maybe we could do something like when blah 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 immediately blah blah blah. Yeah, so maybe it would be something like like a moment immediately. Um, so let's let's pause that because we're getting some good phonological forms in here. What about bavur for the ray? Let's take a look at our um, our inventory here. I don't know if we. I don't think we have. We don't have a v, but we could do something like bavur, and that would work. So why don't we do that? Bavur for ray. So we have. Bawur, Bawur, Re. And as soon as, so I think we need something, something like time or moment to build this from. Maybe we could do something like, um, yeah, maybe we could do something like at the time this happened immediately or um, or at once this this other thing happened. So we could use, maybe we could use our root one that we have, I believe, somewhere around here. Uh, let's take a look. Yeah, te. Oh, and tru. Ah, these are different notions of one. So we, this is one like the pro form that where you say, oh, the green one, the blue one, this kind of thing. And dru is the numeral one. Uh, so maybe we can do something like, um, maybe we can do reduplication, like dru dru, one by one. Um, and, oh, Raven's coming in with some inspiration from Ty. This is great. So we can, in okay, so Ty works by saying something like in time moment and then lock i guess that's a locative um okay okay let's let's take some inspiration here so we need for um we need a word for moment so this is like moment and oh i saw something coming in for for feel so let's put that in pibrun that's great and i should probably I should probably get the, uh, if anyone's curious, they want to play along, the syllable structures here. 
Um, so Pibrun is for feel. Yeah, Ty has noun classifiers. I think maybe we should avoid that to uh, to 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 prevent us from going too far into the relax um, or from being too tempted. Uh, maybe we can develop some in, in one of the uh, descendant languages. Um, okay, so moment. Need moment, 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 moment. I'm going to maybe something like Tecal. That could work. Tecal. And how did we do this? So I'm just reading Raven's comment again. So as soon as it's something like in time moment um, locative. A sneeze. <sighs> Zachary, you're onto something here. What if this is the originally the the uh, the verb to sneeze? Although if it's a verb to sneeze, we'd expect something more onomatopoeic. Um, but but maybe not. Tikal. Um, maybe you know you, you could think of that as a sneeze, right? Ha ha ha. Tikal. I don't know. Could work. And then from that from this construction of you know in a sneeze, such and such happened, we get this word for the the use of of moment. Um, Sure, why not? Okay, so let's see. And Raven, um, question about this this in time, in time moment uh, locative, is in time me the the meaning like something happened just in time? Uh, is that the kind of meaning of in time that you're thinking of? Let's let's while we're. Uh, while we're pondering these matters, let's let's add some of these new words in. Ooh. If we could just get into the right spot, that would be super. So, pibrun, and one by one, we could use something like this: this reduplicated drudru. And ah, uh, to be in time for something. Okay, so so let's let's. Let's come up with a root for that, because I like that idea. <laughs> Sneeze. Um, tikal. Gesundheit. All right, so in time. So what could we use here? Let's go back to our, let's go back to our big list. In time, in time, in time. Maybe something like, hmm, mual. That could work. Maltecal. And so as soon as we will translate as Maltecal. In time for a sneeze. And then there was a locative in there as well, which is, um, which we will have before which is, what is it, be, be maltecal, be as soon as. Logan makes an excellent point that all is not necessarily an adjective in all languages. Um, it is a quantifier and it does not necessarily have the pattern with adjectives. That's true. Um, that's true. I think in this case, let's, keep it simple with the asterisk that we may want to revise that decision later. Um, because even in languages where you have a difference in patterning between um, quantifiers and, and adjectives, it's still sometimes the case. I forget the stats. I had them, I think, in that other video that I did about the... Or maybe I didn't... No, I didn't go into the... Uh, the, the uh, within the noun phrase kind of stuff. So I, I do have some stats for that, actually. I'll have to do another video on that. Um, cool, okay, so we have this, oops, put this in the wrong place, Colin, what's wrong with you? Um, this is as soon as, bemwal tekal, in time for a sneeze. 
um, as soon as it's never going to stop. It's never going to stop doing that. Um, okay, and then we have the whole the whole sentence. Bemwan te cala roban pibrun baburre drudru tuarnes. Les, excuse me, bironesal. All right. And. Oh, susut for person. Oh, I like that. Mm, okay. So what are we going to do for this next one? Well, first hydrate. You ever get that feeling where you could just drink like a whole bottle of water in one gulp because you're that thirsty? There's something just so satisfying about that. Okay, so that's that's where we are. Okay. So... Okay. Okay. Sorry. Things are coming in. I'm I'm getting my like uh what's it called my multitasking skills are are improving hopefully or at least they're being put to the test. Um. So Raven points out that the locative is actually the head of the following verb phrase. Interesting. Oh, I like that too. Okay. So so something like multical b. Cool. That works. Multical b. Nice. And then our final sentence. Uh, at last, fairly overcome with heat, he undressed and bathed in a stream that lay in his path. Okay. Um, so we have our at last already. And how are we... I think we should redo this sentence a bit before we translate it. So let's do that. Go over here and then say something like, at last, um, he, now the question is, did we commit to being a topic prominent language? I don't think we committed to that, but I have it. I don't know. I'm being too unduly influenced, I think. Um, at last, he, maybe something like, we could have a, a kind of, um, what's the word? I, I, I think I'm forgetting the term for this, but it's like a malefactive passive. Um, kind of like English get, like he got, he got hit. Um, so something that would come from a word like suffer. Passive, um, something like, yeah, something like uh, Raven points out struck. <clears throat> Excuse me. strike um, by heat let's think if I can maybe something like this he I'm blanking on the structure of this um, but something like he was struck by heat, um, undress, past, bathe, lock, stream, rel, lie, lock, path. something like that. So at last he was struck by heat, undressed, or undressed, bathed. Undressed, bathed in the stream which lay in his path. Lay in his path. Blech. Okay. Yeah. The, 
the thing is, I'm trying to think of where this passive may have come from. So if we think of the grammaticalization pathway, something like he suffered the heat striking him. Um, and then with time, this gets turned into a passive, specifically a, a bad passive. Passives are, um, there are some languages and I'm blanking on, on, on which ones, um, maybe some of you in the chat uh, would remember, where there are separate, uh, se separate passives for sort of good or neutral things and then bad things. Um, English has this to some extent with the get passive. So I got hit by a, I don't know, moose. I don't know. Could be. It's actually, moose are, are pretty dangerous. Um, uh, so, so yeah, this, I'm, I have in mind that this would be one of those languages. Um, Thai. Thai. Yeah. Okay. Maybe it's Thai. Maybe Raven is Thai, is Thai one of these languages that has a separate sort of malefactive passive? Um, at last, okay, so then pro drop, we don't need this he, um, so we need this word, oh, we have it last already, uh, which is last, oh, I think we're missing something. We were going to put another word on this. This um, We need our, our superlative uh, marker. We're going to put at the end of bakal to be at last. Um, let's return to that. Let's just use bakal for now. And we'll return to that. So at last. And then we need this, whatever this passive thing is. And it, it's going to feel like a bird just hit the window or something. That's weird. Um, okay. Um, we have a word for heat already, which is tuar. Uh, we don't have a word for strike, I believe. Uh, we don't have a word for undress, but we have a word for remove clothes. So let's just use that. And I promise I will look up how to do those IPA typing things uh, at some point. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll keep copying and pasting today, but but I will look. Um, there's also a chance that I may be switching computers um, for the stream. And so if I'm on a Mac, it'll be a lot easier for me to do fancy, fancy footwork. Um, he take off clothes and then bathe. B stream a lie be located B path. Oops. So the, the caps ones are the ones we need to come up with roots for. And let's go down to the bottom of this and let's make some. So we need this, we want our malefactive passive. Um, we want our word for strike. We want our word for bathe. We, oop, I think I forgot la before bathe. And so what I've been doing is just putting uh, the past tense marker on the final verb in the in the series. Um, I I can't give you a a well thought out reason for this other than I've seen it before and I think it looks cool. Um, yeah, which, you know, is perhaps the motivation for a surprising number of things that I, I do on here. I've seen it before vaguely and I think it looks cool. So one thing, I, but one thing I absolutely love about the comment section when, when uh, these go on to YouTube is that people come up with you know, much better ideas than I could have. Um, so I am very much appreciative of all of that. Um, okay, so in the meantime, bathe, we need stream. We need this lie slash be located. And we need this path word. 
okay, so Polk for Strike, that's good. I like that a lot. Okay. Ship Combo points out correctly that the felt race sentence is, is lacking the past tense. So let's get that on there. One by one. Took off clothes. And one day I will make my glosses consistent, but today is not that day. Okay, so poke strike. Oh, interesting. We're getting a good tie lesson here. Um, interesting okay all right so Thai has a complicated passive system uh, I don't think we can we can replicate uh, that level of coolness in this yet but we'll we'll take some inspiration um, oh L and s for words involving water and washing maybe something like um, maybe in honor of violet we can do something like Lusu oops Lusu for bathe. Um, or Lusul. Actually, yeah, Lusul. That's cool. I want to put that L on there because I'm kind of, I don't know, I just, the symmetry, you know, it's cool. All right, so then let's say bathe, Lusul. This would also be bath. Um, and then stream, let's do something else with these S's and L's. So something maybe like Sidal. And then we need lie and path and the passive. Okay. Nakri for path. Wesel. Let's put whistle for, oh yes. Okay, okay, good, 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 good moment here because let's take a look at our um, generated thing again. So basically in the minor syllable, okay, let me see if I can find a better way of showing this. In the minor syllable, we can only have the peripheral vowels, a, i, u. Um, so, so we could have whistle. Yeah, we sell or was sell. Um, we sell. So we sell to be located, and then stream and could stream and path be be related. Well, that's an interesting that's an interesting thought because our idea for this um, proto culture is that they are seafarers. So to them, would a stream be a, a path? I think a stream would be challenging to navigate um, if we're talking about a stream in the sense of a very shallow um, body of water. But what about a river? What about something that they could navigate up? I think that would be a cool, um, a cool one. <gasps> ah, tikal doesn't fit with the uh, the syllable structure. We got to change it to tikal. Good points. Thank you. Keeping me. Keeping me honest here. I love it. Okay, multical. B. Um, okay, so then what do we have? We have wisel. A wisel. B. Nakri. So why don't we put that polysemy. Why don't we put that polysemy in right now and say path or stream? Or sorry, or path or river. So we would in the sort of ontology of this culture, we are distinguishing very strongly between navigable bodies of water and unnavigable bodies of water. So that's Sidal. So we get a stream, but any non-navigable river. And Nakri is navigable river. And right there, I think we have built in some, some cool stuff. Um, okay, and I think we just need one more root, one more root for this um, passive. 
and let's make this the the word suffer undergo and it could be something like oh violet comes in saying a sidal could also be a, a, a patch of trail that's impassable yes trail maybe obstacle in general um that could work too so this is another thing i really want to do today which is to start bringing out the the words that are involved in the central metaphors of that this language uses and so i think we've we've come across one um nasir okay i like this i like this a lot apologies for the uh for the copying and pasting here, but Nasir. And boom. So that means our, our final sentence is Bakal Nasir Tuarpok. Oh, we have both Tuars in one sentence. Oh, this is cool. Bakal Nasir Tuarpok Tuarles Lalusul Besidal Awisel Benakri. I can see this kind of getting a rhythm to it. That's kind of nice. All right, so let's uh, put this in bold so we can see it easily. And let's try and get rid of this underline. Okay. So then what we've written today is, get rid of this. Re nom tuarnok lanrit, maltikal be aroban pi brum baburre, trudru la tuarnles. Bakal ngasir tuar, Oops, I gotta do the intonation right. So let's put a comma in here. Um, there. Bakal ngasir tuar pok, tuar ngles, la lusul besidala wisel benakri. I'm proud of that. That's fun. Oh, oh I'm so glad, Violet. That's such a nice thing to hear. I'm glad that, uh, that you enjoyed the chance to sort of Come in and participate. I enjoy it too. It helps, and <laughs> it saves me on work of coming up with things too. So it's a, it's really it's a win-win. Um, okay. Well, I'm gonna put in a cut here uh, for YouTube, and then why don't we do a few proverbs and and work out some of these uh, central kind of areas of metaphor. So back to the big view, and to just say thank you for uh, joining me for this this uh, adventure into uh, into uh, conlanging and writing fables and grammar and all sorts of fun like that. And uh, if you enjoyed it, uh, like and subscribe, I guess I have to say, right? And uh, we'll see you next time.